What's up everybody? Ted Purchase here, Bold Lens Photography, and this is the Komen KX3232 video monopod with a head. The other day I actually had kind of a really weird request. Um, somebody wanted to do sort of this weird real estate video, but it was more for personal purposes than it was for... Um, you know, they weren't trying to sell it, they just wanted like a nice video of their house. So instead of doing my typical, you know, wide angle walkthrough to show off the space, I did a lot of detail shots instead. I was using my Zyun Crane V2 for that, and it didn't really take long for me to realize that doing these detail shots, you know, zoomed in really far, uh, doesn't work too good with a gimbal. Gimbals are made more for wide work so I decided and I've been wanting to get one for a while so I decided to pick up a video monopod now it's not something I'm going to use a whole ton for the type of work that I do but I still wanted to get one to check it out and uh, I didn't want to break the bank so I was looking for something really good on a budget uh, there's Benro uh, Siru Yi however the heck you pronounce that one <laughs> And Manfrotto's obviously a really popular choice. So I was looking at those brands, I was looking on Amazon, and then I came across this one. This is actually one of the best reviewed video monopods that's on Amazon. And I could definitely see why now that I picked it up. All those other brands, like the Series, those were kind of expensive, but a lot of the Ben Rose and the Manfrotto's, I hear good things, but then you read the reviews and there's some complaints, but this actually had like really the best reviews out there so this could quite possibly be the best video monopod for anybody that's on a budget and now that I got it in my hands and checked it out for myself I completely uh, believe the hype and understand why so many people were loving this thing so let's go ahead and just take a quick look at it so this is a complete kit so you get the head and the uh, monopod itself so you have your uh, your arm here for doing your panning shots and you can see there's a ratcheting mechanism so you could uh, set it to where that folds down so it's out of the way or uh, you could switch sides here so it's very flexible on um, how you want to get it set up it has the Manfrotto style release plate underneath here, but I don't use those. I use Arca Swiss type plates because I already have a bunch of those on everything. And uh, let me go ahead and loosen this up real quick. But you can, what's kind of nice is that if you want to just adjust it and bounce, you just loosen up this lever on the side and that can go back and forth. And then this button, if you pull this and actually take it out, then it lets you take out the plate all together tighten that back up on you have a little uh, spirit bubble level there on the side here this is just these aren't adjustable so your pan and tilt oops, I got my microphone cable getting in the way there your pan and your tilt they're not adjustable the uh, dampening on them it but you can turn this this locks your tilt and this locks your pan so if you do those then this thing ain't gonna move at all so yeah that's the head portion right there and as far as the action it's kind of hard to do just holding it with my feet here but this thing is it just feels buttery smooth a little bit ago I did a review on just a cheap really cheap budget video head this is a thousand times better this thing is really nice I could see why it had such good reviews this is beautiful perfect I, I couldn't ask for a smoother action on a video head the, the only thing I wish is that it did is if I do wish that it was adjustable but let's go ahead and look at the monopod portion here so you have a wrist strap you have a padded this is aluminum and, and it's kind of crummy I accidentally bought the aluminum one I didn't realize that there's also a carbon fiber one that was only a few bucks more I think this was like 130 140 bucks and you could spend an extra 20 or 30 bucks and get the carbon fiber version um, too little too late though and I'm not going to use this like just a ton or every day if I did I would get the carbon fiber one which is what I suggest you get 
but if you want to save a few bucks you can go with the aluminum version one reason why I picked this up is I absolutely hate the little twist lock leg extensions they're just I don't know they're unintuitive these these ones are so much better that just that you just flip up adjust it flip it back down now there is one flaw with this that I thought was kind of weird if I flip this up and I extend this all the way out really far flip it back down okay that's locked into place now let's say I want to get this one flip this up and now this thing is just like stuck like it's not wanting to move at all but as soon as I flip this back up here come on. now this that will slide right open so it's just kind of a weird design it's because these are conical and then when the uh, when they lock in because they're tapered it's kind of locking down the whole thing so it, it makes it a little goofy and awkward to adjust so that's definitely my biggest complaint about this at the end here but it's not a big deal I mean it's just kind of makes it a little annoying when you're trying to get it just the right height and, and you maybe just want to adjust one section while the other ones are locked in well you, you can't always do that it won't always work right so you have to unlock them all and then try and adjust it and then you're trying to lock them all while they're loose and it's it's a little bit of a pain pretty annoying I wish they'd get that fixed but it is what it is um, on the end here of course you got your little feet push this in they flip up for storage or if you want there is just a little uh, rubber ending on there so if you don't want to use the feet you don't have to oops and then you have a nice little twist lock and this is aluminum too it's actually built really solid and if you have this locked down this feet won't pivot at all but if you do open this up like so then these will actually then this is like a, a ball head now the it's kind of an issue but it isn't this thing is not like fluid it's really you can see how stiff it is but when you actually put it on the ground just because of the weight and the physics of it it actually does it's actually still pretty smooth so you can do kind of these tilt motions with it so even though it's not really as smooth as I'd like it to be like the head up here is um, just because of the weight and the location of it it actually ends up working out but if I have to say that'd be one of my other complaints about it. Let's go ahead and get this locked in here. Okay, and that locks back up pretty quickly and easily. As far as the construction goes, like I said, this is all metal all the way down. About the only thing plastic down here is these uh is the little tab locks here, but they're very these are very solid they're even though they're plastic I think they're very high quality the head however is mostly plastic but this doesn't feel like some cheap plastic that's going to break this feels like it's just as tough as any metal out there so I think that you know this this um, monopod for me even though it's a budget monopod and, and I'm not like super experienced with video monopods by any means but this is really, really, really high quality as far as its function, um, its build, everything about it. But let's go ahead. I'm going to take the Panasonic G9. I'm going to turn off stabilization and I'm going to put it on top of this thing and see what it can do as, as far as see if we can get some good shots. Unfortunately, the uh, <laughs> it's it's all like really nasty overcast it's a pretty ugly day out here on the oregon coast but uh, hopefully we can get some pretty cool shots and i also just before we do that i would like to say that i really do appreciate everybody who's been subbing to my channel everybody who's been commenting on the videos and supporting the channel i know i haven't uploaded in a while i got a lot of stuff going on it's a busy summer I have some family issues. I got a family member in the hospital that I'm, um, you know, dealing with, and 
Uh, yeah, it's just crazy. I'm trying to get that camping trip set up. If you look at my last video, I'm doing a big photography camping trip in Oregon. So if you're in the Pacific Northwest and you want to go to a fun community photography camping trip, check out that video. But let's go ahead, toss the G9 on here and see what it can do. Okay, guys, first test I'm going to do is just a simple pan. We are at 14 millimeters right now, and let's see what it can do. Looks pretty nice and smooth to me right now. I am standing. It is on uneven terrain as well. I'm on gravel right now. So that looks pretty good. Let's try some other focal lengths. So let's try it. So that's about 28 millimeter equivalent. So if we go to 18 here, that should be right around like 35, 36 millimeter equivalent focal range. Try that again here. Still looks pretty smooth to me. I'm gonna zoom in here, 25 millimeter. It's micro four thirds, so you just double it to get the full frame equivalent. So this is like a 50 millimeter equivalent here. Just panning with that boat right now. Right now we're pretty close to about 85 millimeter. So that's one thing is when you're using the gimbal, as long as you're wide, it's nice and smooth. But as soon as you start zooming in, then you really see every little issue with it. 100 millimeter equivalent. Now you can see it is getting a little shaky. I do have the stabilization off, like I said. Now we're pretty close to the 135 millimeter equivalent. I haven't refocused this lens at all, so I'm not sure if it's par focal or not. Go focus it right there and make sure we're in focus here. Two hundred millimeters equivalent. Focus in. Now you're starting to see every single little tiny shake that I have is starting to show up here. Still pretty smooth considering how zoomed in we are. Yeah, just every little teeny touch you're kind of seeing it. Okay, now let's go all the way in at 140. Maximum. Maximum range. You can actually see those birds and those birds are not close to me. You can see, just even on a let go of it, it, now you can see the jiggles. But if you just trying to go real steady here. Oops. Now let's just see what this can do with the power stabilization on. Now you can see it's not really jiggling. So just having that extra layer of stabilization. You can see the uh, sea lines down there. That really makes a big difference. Don't forget this is dual stabilization on the G9 so this is pretty much as good as you're ever going to get as far as stabilization goes. But, and then let's see what it does with stabilization at 14. Probably won't notice it here because it's so smooth before. One thing I did notice is that sometimes with the G9, and this is pretty much with every camera, whether you're using optical or IBIS or both, sometimes it does have, every once in a while you get a weird glitch like a wobble effect. So that's why a lot of filmmakers 
actually don't like IBIS that much or lens stabilization, they'd much rather use monopods, tripods, you know, get the proper stabilization equipment so they don't have to worry about any sort of issues with that. For your average Joe, that's not really a big deal, but yeah, that's starting to look pretty good on the uh, pan. Let's go ahead and test out the tilt capability of this. Okay, guys. Let's go ahead and see how this thing does with tilt. We're at 28 millimeter equivalent. Yeah, you can see that's nice and smooth. It's a little wobbly because I did loosen up the bottom so I could try and get everything nice and straight on it. That's one thing about these is that if you want to get them straight, you pretty much have to just kind of hold them there. If you're looking for nice super duper even lines you're probably better off with a video tripod but that can also be a pain to use let's go ahead and try this at 50 millimeter equivalent good focus okay One thing is that these type of devices, a lot of times they're only as steady as you are. And I'm the opposite of steady when it comes to my hands. By the way, I'm on a flat surface right now. I'm on a freshly paved asphalt road, which is a rarity here at the Oregon coast. Let's go ahead, try this about 70 millimeters. Not wanting to focus properly, but now you can see the jiggle starting to come into play here. Then we'll go ahead and just do the maximum 140. Now you can see every single little jiggle just like before. Why don't you start to really zoom in there? Do a little bit of focus pull action. Let's go ahead and try it with the Power OIS on. You can see that just makes a huge difference. Two hundred and eighty millimeter full frame equivalent focal length. I would say that that's pretty good. Let's see what it does at 14 with the power OIS on. I'm, I'm thinking that this thing's actually pretty nice and smooth. Okay guys, now I'm just doing some testing here. I'm seeing uh, how well this will work basically as like a tripod. So I'm at 140 millimeter. I'm actually on a hill on grass. I have the feet loosened up. And I'm just trying to hold it as steady as I possibly can while I do some uh, tap focus pulls. Normally, if I want to do like a nice focus pull or something, usually I would use a shorter lens that's faster and you can see here the G9 doesn't do the most perfect focus pulls. You can also see that every kind of little wiggle that I do is affecting it. If it was locked in on flat ground it'd probably be a little bit better but usually you're not going to do this at 280 millimeters you're going to be doing it with like a you know, 50 or an 85 millimeter, something like that. But let's go ahead and turn on the power stabilization. Boom. Nice and smooth. See, so yeah, if you're just using it as a tripod, you're zoomed in really far. It's probably not going to be 
that good even with stabilization if you're trying to get that perfectly straight look but sometimes you know just having this little bit of swing this little bit of motion can really add to your video um, one thing you'll notice is that most cinema isn't done just like on tripods that are perfectly still that's there's not a lot of shots like that so this is still you know really good to get you that cinematic shot where there is a little bit of motion but it's not jerky it doesn't look like a homemade movie or anything and let's go ahead and just try see how steady this looks 14 millimeters now you can see once we're at 14 millimeters it pretty much looks uh, rock solid stabilization is going to be turned off now Okay, so even with the stabilization off, it looks completely rock solid. So it will look rock solid as long as you're not zoomed in too far. Here's 50 millimeter equivalent. So you can see a little bit of motion in there, a little bit of movement. Let's zoom in around, you know, around like an 85, what an 85 would look like. Still pretty solid. 135? That's not even too bad either, so... Yeah, if you're just looking for something that can keep your camera steady while you do a focus pull or, you know, anything, you, you know, then this will do a pretty good job at the longer focal lengths. You'll get a little bit of sway in there, but that's going to, a lot of times, add a little bit of character to your shot. So, and of course, if you're on super flat, even ground, you could just set this down and it'll hold and it'll be like a tripod. So if it's flat, even ground, then you, you really don't have to worry about it. So... Let's go ahead and do a little bit more testing. Okay guys, for this next test, I'm actually kind of using a little bit of everything here. I have it all loosened up, continuous autofocus, and I'm seeing how this does just tracking a subject. And I have a boat that I'm looking at right here. Let me zoom in a little bit, oops. There we go. Lost focus there for a second. But just kind of using all the tools I have at my disposal track them as smooth, as smooth as I can. This is with Power OIS off. Let's go ahead and try it with it on here. Let's see, I got another boat coming by here. It's with Power OIS on. Pretty much zoomed almost all the way in here. My footage is a little bit a little bit shaky there just because I'm on I'm on rocks right now as you can see Woo, this is what I'm standing on so it's making it a little bit tough to uh, keep my footing steady this is just woo, it's throwing out something see here I got a few seals oh, not want to focus there we go let's try something that's a little bit slower moving Right now we're about 160 millimeter full frame equivalent focal length here. Turning off power image stabilization. And just to clarify, the feet are loosened up. The vertical tilt and the pan everything's loosened up ready to go okay guys let's go ahead and test out the tilt capability of the feet on this thing so we're at 28 millimeters here and we're just gonna bring it up okay let's go ahead and try and straighten this up a little bit more bring it down 
You can see it's pretty smooth, especially when you're at 28 millimeters. Let's go ahead and check out 50 millimeter. Refocus here. Okay. Got to bring that up. Do a kind of a revealing shot. Without using, we're not using the tilt on the head. We're just using the feet only here. The head's completely locked down tight. Let's go into 70, so 140 millimeter equivalent here. I think it's not wanting to let me focus. One second. Okay, there we go. Let's go. I don't know why you'd want to just tilt like this, but you could. <laughs> okay, and let's go at a maximum distance here. 280 millimeter equivalent distance. I'm gonna turn on power image stabilization. Let's try that one again. It's actually very smooth considering how stiff it was when I was showing you guys at the beginning of this video. Now let's go ahead and check it out at 28 millimeter equivalent with the image stabilization on. Try and get that straightened out as best I can. Okay guys, final test here. I'm at 280 with the uh, digital 2x teleconverter that does is that instead of down sampling it's just going to use the inner pixels for the image instead and got some uh, some seals here on the beach and I'm just trying to keep things as steady as possible here as you can see once you start getting into these extreme focal lengths just standing up I am on flat ground now I have everything loosened up but it does start getting a little bit shaky here so at this point you might want to get like a really nice tripod or something like that or turn on image stabilization let's see how that works as you can see that's pretty nice and smooth with the image stabilization on considering I'm standing if I was sitting down like in a really comfortable chair or something, it would probably be a lot smoother. And I'm just going to, uh, right now, I'm not even going to really touch it. I'm just barely even touching it. So this is going to be 140 times 4. So this is 560 millimeter equivalent focal range, and I'm doing it without a tripod. We got a puppy over here. Good test of the G9 autofocus. You can see with the G9, it's pretty good, but sometimes it's hit or miss, which is unfortunate because the camera is amazing. Okay guys, my final thoughts on this monopod so far, just from these little bit of testing that I'm, I've done, it seems extremely useful, but if you also have a camera with good in-body image stabilization, lens stabilization, or both like the G9, it just makes this product even 10 times more useful. Um, from the footage that I've seen, it looked incredibly smooth, unless I was uh, zoomed in really far with the OIS turned off, but I, I really don't think you can go wrong with this. I think gimbals are great and everything, but if you ever used a gimbal for an extended period amount of time um, with a, uh, even if you got a lighter camera on it on top of a lighter gimbal, they can still really hurt your wrist after a while. And when I was doing detail shot after detail shot, with nothing but a gimbal, my arm was hurting. And when it starts to hurt like that, you shake. And when you're zoomed in on the gimbals, they're not nearly as smooth as what this thing is doing with the uh, Power OIS plus 
um, physical stabilization versus electronic stabilization. Uh, the electronic stuff can kind of go a little whack on you sometime where a physical stabilization, you, you kind of know what it's going to do. It's not going to give you any surprises like a gimbal will where all of a sudden it fails and doesn't move the way that you want it to. So I hope you guys like this video. Uh, the link to this product is down below in the description and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Hey guys, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, enable notification, and comment down below. If you'd like to support this channel so I can make future content, check out my website, boldlensphotography.com, where I sell fine art prints. You can also donate money at patreon.com forward slash boldlensphotography, and I'll have links below to all my social media accounts. And uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time. Bye.